Hi, so this is a quick tour of the LDAP search function within NetTools. Um, the LDAP search function is found here uh, under the LDAP category. Um, once we click on that, we get the LDAP search pane. So what we can see is the server, the base DN, the um, search filter, which we're actually going to use, and which attributes we want to return. We've got a number of other options as well, so we can specify the scope of the, uh, the actual search whether it's actually the base object or whether it's uh, one level below that or the whole subtree. Uh, we have the favorite options, which allows us to um, save queries and reuse them again later. Or we can actually share those and import queries which have actually been shared with us or you've actually got from the NetTools um, website, which has a number of uh, predefined queries in there for you. Um, so this is going to be a quick tour. We're not going to cover all the features. Um, it's probably going to get quite long as it is anyway, uh, once we start going into some of the, uh, the details. Um, but one thing I would say is that use the, the website because it has more details about individual or specific options with, uh, with some more details about how to actually use that and how it's actually constructed. So for the server one then, so when we actually want to connect to a server, we can specify the server name here, and this will provide us that connection string. We can, so that can be a server, it can be the domain name, um, if we're talking about Active Directory, or we, as it's, as you saw there in the, in the server, we can actually do like local host and then specify a port number. So if it was an LDAP directory, we can specify that port. Um, and so when you run this by default, it's actually gonna use your, the credentials which you've actually launched NetTools in. Um, if you want to use a different set of credentials, there's the connection profile option. Uh, once you connect, connect, create the connection profile, you can specify different um, credentials, and that, that, that's then available there. There's a separate video on that which takes in a lot more detail about how to use the profiles, so I won't cover that here, but we'll just say that use that, use that have a look at that video because that will give you much more detail around how to use connection profiles. Um, so when we actually do Populate, when we've actually got a directory, we, we click on this populate button and what I'll do is it will go off to the schema. It'll pull down some schema information in terms of you know, what attributes, some um, some attributes which are actually used to do so to find sorts and also autocomplete. So one of the features we have within uh, the, both the filter and the attribute um, fields is that it, as we start to type a name, we actually get a list of attributes which um, match that of what we've typed so far. And by selecting that, we can actually sort of simplify the entry of um, uh, attributes you want to return. And also if the attribute is incorrect, it will highlight that it's incorrect. So the, the other feature of actually clicking on the populate button is that we actually enable um, search filter validation. So as we type into a filter, it will actually validate the filter as you type. And so, when it's actually got an invalid format, it'll actually then display it as you know this pink background to indicate that it's wrong. Um, now this is a this is a client side um, filter check. It doesn't necessarily mean your filter is actually going to be correct. All it means is that the format for it is actually correct as well. So it's more about the fact you've got the right number of brackets, you've got the right details in there. So you've got actually got a constructed name, um, and you've got the, the the attribute and the actual value. So it's it's more it's 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 a basic check. It won't actually guarantee that your, your filter will run, but it gives you um, a good idea whether the actual filter is actually correct or not. Now, what we do have is that the output side for NetTools is split into two parts. We have this top part, which is actually the, um, the table view, and then we have the bottom bit, which is the text view. So if we just clear this one for a second and we run a quick query here. So what we can see is that we've got absolutely nothing because the filter is wrong. So if we clear this and run this again, um, so we just run this filter, we just run this query, we can see that we've got um, a column view, which enables to, it's just a tabular view, so you can actually see it. And then we've got a text view at the bottom. So that's the basic output. So as we increase what we want to display, we get displayed more information. Um, and also we can actually then limit what we're displayed by, for instance, specifying names, which makes the queries quicker. Now we have the more button here, which enables, which shows more options within NetTools. And so this is when we start getting into a little bit more detail about what you can actually do with NetTools and sort of some of the advanced features. But the, the controls are basically split, split, split up into a number of different sections. So we've got display options, which controls how we actually output, what information we see. Some server-side controls, this is, this is the control which is sent to the server, which will then 
filter or change the results which actually the server returned to you. We've got table view options which controls what's displayed on the table options and inputs and outputs. So we'll go over quickly over the input uh, table input mode uh, a bit later, which gives us a bit more flexibility in some of the search options we've got. So the miscellaneous option gives us a few options around sort of dynamic attributes. So this is for the decodes, so it allows you to actually do the decodes from the schema, so it reads more information. And then the sort attributes um, reads more information, which actually then allows the sort of column sorts to work uh, with different data types, with more data types. Downside is it reads more at the beginning of the query, so it slows the query down in terms of execution, but you get a better, better functionality or better user experience when you're trying to actually do column sorts and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, the autocomplete option enables the autocomplete on the uh, filter and attributes field. Um, the chase referrals enables you, so if a server says, I, I don't actually have a reference for that, but it knows of a reference, it'll point it to somebody else. That's called a referral. And by clicking the chase referrals, um, net tools and the server will actually then go off and actually try and resolve those for you. So it'll actually bring back the results. If you're targeting the wrong server and the, and the server you're targeting knows where the results are, it'll point you that way and net tools will automatically go off and get that for you. So extended errors, uh, leave this ticked um, is, is best because there's two two errors within uh, which are returned from LDAP. There's the short error, which gives you like server failed, query failed. Um, and then you get the extended error, which actually gives you more details about why that actually happened. So within it, in, the, in the example of a query, the extended errors may also tell you that you've got the wrong variable or you've got the wrong attribute type. So it'll give you more information. So leaving extended errors on gives you more, more verbose information about what actually the problems were. The update section controls um, updates. So it allows you to actually write information back. And so based on the options here and based on the attributes uh, field, or define how you actually write details back into um, the Active Directory. So what we do have as well is that on the uh, both in the text and the column view or page view is that we have um, contacts, contact uh, uh, menus, which enables you to actually, uh, for instance, view the attributes of that selected object, um, or we can actually do a copy and paste that we copy the details out. And that's one of the major features of uh, NetTools is the cut and paste and the usage of cut and paste within NetTools, where you can cut and paste information from this particular LDAP search one to, you know, compare objects or one of the other tests which are available in NetTools. So you can actually use that to transfer information between tests and perform that test. Um, so within the table view, what we do have, this is a single view, but we do have this tab view. So within the tab view, what this enables us to do, if we just minimize that for a second, um, each time you run a query, um, the results are then put into another tab. So we have another tab for each one. So what you can actually do is you can run multiple queries and, and then you can actually go back and look at the results for each one of those. So you get results on a, on a tab basis. One of the other features which is around um, this data manipulation piece is this option which is called copy to new window. Now this will take the data and output it into a new window. So this is detached and you can do what you want with this. But what we also have by left clicking on the columns, we can actually then do um, Sort of an Excel style uh, column filter. So we can actually filter things based on text or we can build based on, you know, I want to see built in objects. It will display built in. So it gives you some options about how to actually filter, manipulate data. And the same with this one, we can actually then do a copy and paste. We can copy the whole table or we can copy that into um, uh, back into NetTools or into Excel where you want to do some more manipulation of the data. So you've got this cut and paste to actually get information in and out. So going into a little bit more detail then, what I want to just quickly cover is the uh, input table mode. So we're just going to turn off um, the tab for a second. We're just going to go and deal with a single column. And what, what this allows us to do is, so if I uh, go back to my documents, I've got a, I've got a list of uh, SAM account names here. So I can copy that, come into NetTools, turn on the table view, and do this for a bit. And we can go paste, and that pastes those those details in here. Now, when you're actually in input mode, what actually happens is that NetTools will run a query for each one of these uh, lines, and it will use the input, use this column data in the actual filter how you specify it. 
So what we can do is that, uh, depending on the data, we can use, so we, we take the column name, which is hash hash input, and we can place that wherever we want. So within uh, the base DN or within the filter. And in, when we're doing updates, we can actually put it in the attributes as well. So to give you an example then, so if we, we're looking here for a user, so let's just set this up for a user. And we do that, and we, and we know the same account name. So what we can do is we can type in some account name and we can go input one. Let's just put that in an and filter. And we can now run that. And what it will actually do is it'll run this. So what we've got here, we've got five entries here. So it'll run it five times and each time it runs, it will substitute input at hash hash input for the variable here. So when we run it, there you go, it's found all five of those and returned the details from it. So we've just asked for the name, but we can ask for like user account name. And that will actually uh, give you more information on that or display that attribute for you. So this is this is a very powerful one and we can actually um, use this um, in a number of ways. That was for some account. So for instance, I've now got DNs here. So these are actually the same users for make it simple. So we'll replace those that are inputs. That's now our input. And because we've actually got a uh, a DN, we want to change that to a base DN. We want to put that in the base DN one. So as you can see, the the drop downs actually remember your last uh, enters um, field. So if we now change this to input one, and this is obviously a base base level search, and we get the same thing. So we can actually use that in a number of different ways to actually do that. And what we can do is we can actually, where this becomes more powerful is that we can actually combine this with um, the update queries. So we'll have a quick look at a quick update here. So what we've got is that I've got a list of users here, which, um, so if we take those and we'll do an import on this. So we just replace those. And what we're going to do is we want to search for these users. And these are the same account names again. So we'll just go back and set this a second. And we'll go same account name. And we'll do a search and it finds them. So currently, let's have a quick look at what the department name is. And so these departments are in ICT. Now, as an example, we might go, right, the organization is designed to change the name of ICT to, I don't know, IT. So if we go back to our original source data and we just go right for those ones, this is a tab separated column format at the moment. So if we import those, so we can save that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, right, we're going to do an update query. So what we're going to do is we're going to update the department name. So we're going to do an update. So we enable that. And so by default, when you enable an update query, it always defaults to preview. Once you run it, it always comes back to preview. This is one of the safe safety features to make sure you don't run it multiple times and sort of do go astray because you may change the query or something and it, it then does something completely different. So this is one of the safety features for the, it goes into preview mode. So what we're gonna do is that um, on the end here, we got some help. And if we scroll down to update queries, so we've got a number of options we can actually choose here. So we can do, um, so this comes in as a, uh, as we can see here from the examples, we say we want to, this sets it. We can add additional attribute, attribute to, if it's a multi-value attribute, we can add a new value to it. We can do some um, uh, bit levels um, updates as well. We can move stuff, we can delete stuff, and we can remove individual values from an attribute as well. So if it's a multi-value stuff, you'll actually remove it for you. Um, so that's, that's, the updates is actually done by here. So what we can do is if we go, equals so we go through and say um so the example's not good because we actually we can actually just run this query and, and reset all of these just straight to it but all we can do is that we can actually oh, actually i'll do this example so so this user was ict and now these are being called uh, end user computing ict end user computing these are now become uh infra and this users become service desk, and this one's in service desk. So we actually we're changing the department names a little bit more significantly here. So 
So we go back and we do a replace. So what we're going to do now is we actually take the input column, which is uh, input, oops, input two, <coughs> and what this will do is it will run through each one of these, find the user object, and then set the department to that name. So if we run that, uh, my suggestion is always run it in preview first, just to make sure you've got your query right. You're not going to bring back the wrong information. You're updating the whole things. So we can see what this will do. And when you run in preview mode, this shows you what it, it thinks it's going to set to it. Because it's best guess at the moment. Um, it's only when you actually run it that it will actually make that change. So we take our preview mode. mode the, the button's now gone red to indicate you're about to do some writes. So we click go and gives you a, a warning message. There is no undo from this. This is a one-way operation. Um, so you can't undo it. And that's now done. So that's actually now up done that update. So that's the update query piece now. When you actually untick this or unselect the updates, this attribute piece at the end is ignored. So you can actually run it again now and it'll actually display what was actually there. So this is actually what's returned. Um, if we can just prove that. We delete it and we run it. So that's an easy way to actually do a mass update. So if you've got a SAM account name or a DN, um, then you can actually go through and do multiple attribute updates. And so this is showing one attribute, but we could, for example, if we actually had multiple in inputs in here, in this tab separated, so we, we could do another one, which I don't know, maybe manager or something like that. And so we can then do the, the um, an update across multiple um, values. Because every time you actually add another value, all you get is another input. So go hash hash input three will be the next one. And you just change where you actually place that value in here. So we can actually do multiple multiple updates for that. So I just want to say a quick thing about performance. Um, so currently this is running on a, a, an RDP session. And RDP is notoriously quite bad for its um, video updates, so it can be quite slow. So there's, a, there's an additional options within NetTools to actually sort of help that work a little bit better. So if we run this, so this is probably quite a bad query because what we're actually doing is returning every attribute um, from every object in the directory. So when we run this, we can see that the update's not that quick. Um, a lot of this down to the fact that this is um, auto-sizing columns and stuff like that. And we're running it on a terminal server, so the display's not that quick. So what we can do is there's a number of different ways we can increase this. So if you just want to see a number, um, so for instance, you build your server, you build your search, and you want to see um, how many accounts are active. You don't care what the actual details are, which ones are which. We can actually turn off display. And so when you click that, um, uh, we don't get any updates on it. But as you can see, that returned 4,000 objects pretty quickly. Um, Maybe you are interested in some of the information. So if we say, okay, we want the name. And so that's going to take a long time to get 4,000. What we can do is, and that's because the screen updates. So what we can do is we can turn only display on complete. And as you can see, it's running a lot faster through that, those details now to actually get you those, retur those returned information. So there's a few options you can actually speed up the actual, um, the return. The, the big one is to make sure you get your search query correct. As, as using as many indexes as possible and only return the information you need and that will significantly improve the performance of your queries. I just want to quickly cover decodes. So when an attribute is uh, read from Active Directory, the format that's actually stored in Active Directory may not be uh, readable. Um, so the decode types actually then take that data, manipulate it and then put it into a displayable format. So there's a number of decode types which are available. And I think it's sort of in excess of 40 decodes now, which are available. Um, and this dialog box lets you see which ones have been defined. So some of these would be static, which are actually part of the actual static defined within NetTools. Some of them are dynamic, where they've actually read the schema and actually set it. Or you can have user configurable ones. So within this dialog, you can uh, set those. But once you set them in this dialog box, that means it's actually used everywhere in NetTools. So these are actually um, so when you do the LDAP search or you do user search or some of the other features, it will actually use these decode types. So it will actually change it across the whole whole of the uh, um, net tools. 
But what you do have the option, we can actually do a manual override. So we can actually do, um, we can specify um, an override here. So if we do here, maybe this is the wrong, let's just reduce this search a little bit. I don't want to do that many users. So we'll just do this group one and we can see that we return number of groups. And because we specified bin, which is binary, it's actually then done those. So we can do other things in terms of, we can actually then do uh, raw, which means don't do any formatting at all and just return it into its actual base format. So, that, so for that particular um, attribute name, which is a text field, doesn't actually make a lot of difference. But when we sort of do something like uh, when created, so that's the converted or decode type, which has actually been used to display that. If we actually go raw here, we can actually see that this has actually been saved in what's called uh, a GTF format. And so while this is readable, it's not that readable um, without sort of more study, but the decode type will actually let you um, uh, change the format. So at the moment that's doing the GTF, but we can also do a GTF time underscore UTC. So we can actually get the time back. Oops, if I type it correctly, we can get back in, in UTC, uh, GMT time. Now we can actually use this option to actually do a little bit more. So, um, so if we take these particular groups, and so we're going to take, we take the name, and we we'll take member. Now when we do that, it actually returns the complete list of members. So in here, these are pretty low number of groups uh, members in here. So it's pretty low. But what we can actually do is we can use the decode to our advantage. So there's a decode which is called count, and what that'll do is return the actual number of uh, uh, values which have been set for that attribute. So when we run there, it's all one. Um, but then if we go for a slightly larger, so if we do this across groups and we say, let's do it across the whole tree, what we can do then is that scanned all the groups in this directory. And we can see that this group here has got 85 members. And so we can have a look there and we can see those members. So it's just a few options around the decode types where you can actually use them to your advantage by changing the format or some of the controls around that. Um, if you look in the help here, um, you can see all the decode types we can actually select. So that's uh, just a quick overview of decodes. Okay, that wraps up this quick tour. Bye for now.